What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crackers. I'm David Wilson. And today I want to show you a few really interesting things about org mode custom agenda views. Now, custom agenda views are basically ways to save searches across all the information that might be stored in your org mode files, specifically around to do items where you might have things like scheduled dates or deadlines or tags or property metadata or many other things, priorities that you want to uh, search across. And this information may be meaningful to you in different ways. So org mode gives you the ability to create custom views for uh, any to do's that fit a particular search criteria so that you can get all the information that you need from your org files right at your fingertips whenever you need it. So this fits into a larger picture of how to create a holistic productivity system or workflow with org mode. Uh, so what I want to do today is to show you five different custom agenda views that might actually be useful to you in your own productivity workflow. So the first type of org agenda view that we're gonna look at right now is how to create an agenda view that will show you only to do items that uh, contain a particular tag. Now this can be useful if you follow the uh, video that I did, which talks about setting context tags on org mode task to make it easier for you to uh, find all tasks that are related to a given context, whether it's an activity, a device, a place, etc. Uh, and what we're looking at right now is a customization of the org agenda custom commands variable, which is the key place to go when you want to create your own custom agenda views. And uh, what we're looking at here is basically we're setting it to a list, which is actually a list of containing one other list. Now, as we get through the video, you'll see how we can actually have multiple uh, sections to this list that represent different agenda views. But for now, we're only gonna look at one uh, particular agenda view where we're setting um, a query for the at planning tags. We talked about at planning in the other video where maybe you have a set of tasks that are related to planning or maybe something that you need to, to look at whenever you're doing planning for your week or maybe for projects, et cetera. Uh, this actual configuration here, um, I'll, I'll break down what each set of this does or each part of this does. The first thing in this list is P, which is the hot key for this agenda view. So whenever you load up org agenda, I'm gonna call meta X org agenda. We can actually see that there's a bunch of different built-in uh, agenda views. Uh, we saw a little bit of that, I think, in the, the video about context tags. But here uh, we can see that there's actually an extra one that uh, at the very end that I added, which is my own custom agenda view. So this P, uh, if I press P, it will give me the planning view, which we'll see in a second. And it will do the, the query that I've defined here. So P stands for the hotkey. Planning is actually the, the descriptive name of this agenda view that shows up in that little org agenda panel that popped up. Uh, tags to do is a special symbol that says that we're actually going to search for all to do items with a specific tag or a list of tags. You can also exclude tags, which is one of the other things that uh, we might see in a moment um, to con construct a, a, a custom view to show you only the to do items that uh, match that search query. Um, now, obviously, you're probably looking at this and thinking, well, how am I supposed to know what the um, <clears throat> the format of these lists are supposed to be. Well, that's where you go and use control HV, which is uh, describe variable. And if you do that, the Emacs help system will actually tell you what a lot of this stuff is supposed to be. It will tell you the key description type of what we saw before, P planning uh, tags to do. It tells us here that uh, tags to do is a tags, uh, I'm guessing priority to do match in all, oh, prop, tags property to do match in all agenda files to do entries only. So it only looks at to do items. It doesn't look at items that don't have a task state like to do or done. And then it searches based on uh, tags and properties. Um, now, we'll take a look at more uh, complicated configurations for that uh, in a minute. But right now, this is a very simple custom agenda view that we'll take a look at. So I'm gonna run um, org agenda again, but this time I'm actually gonna use this key binding that I've set up here. Um, you don't have to set this binding. This is just the one I'm gonna use for the sake of demonstration. Uh, it's control C O A to launch org agenda. So control C O A. And then now I see that my planning entry is here. I'm gonna press P. And now we're gonna see that we um, get an agenda view that has all of the uh, t tasks that are tagged at planning across all of the um, org files that are in my org agenda files list. So if we use control HV to search org agenda files, there we are. Um, then we can see that this is the list of files that are used to build agenda display. So whenever you run org agenda, this list of files will be consulted whenever you uh, need to uh, build, an build an agenda view. 
So uh, that's how you can specify uh, a single tag. In fact, let's take a look really quick. I want to see what else we got here. So like at, at work, let's say. So if I want to also add the work tag, I can say plus at work. And that will allow me to look at multiple or a query for multiple tags that must all be on the to-do item that comes back in the agenda view. So that's for uh, plus at planning, plus at work. Um, if I wanted to take out all the computer items, I can actually do a minus at computer. Now we're just gonna end up with a an empty uh, agenda list, or we should end up with an empty agenda list. So if I go to P, yes, yeah, so we got an empty one now because I've basically taken all those computer items out. But it just shows you that you can get really specific about which tags you include or exclude from your agenda views whenever you're searching for individual tags. So I like to have one in my uh, agenda views for planning tasks so that it's very easy for me to pull up all the tasks that need planning whenever I have my regularly scheduled planning for the things that I need to get done. So the next useful org custom agenda command we're gonna look at is one for finding all untagged tasks across of your agenda files. So uh, one of the things I mentioned in the video about context tagging is that uh, if you're going to follow a strategy like that, you really need to make sure that all of your to-do items have some context tag attached to them so that they will show up whenever you are working in that context, whether it's a particular activity or a place, or in, place that you're in, etc. cetera. Uh, so the org agenda views can actually help you to find these tasks using a very similar approach to what we just talked about with the uh, searching for planning tags. In this case, we're defining another org agenda view. Now, I've, I've I've cleared out the previous uh, configuration for now. We're just going to focus on one at a time, but I'll show you how we can combine these in a minute. So here we have a custom view with a hotkey of you named untagged tasks. And then we have the uh, tags dash to do uh, custom view type again. But this time we're going to use a search query that's a little bit different. Uh, we're going to use the minus, which we talked about before, which is to exclude a particular tag. But we're going to use these curly braces here to um, actually add a a match pattern for the tags that we are looking for. So what this effectively does is says, I wanna exclude all tags that match this pattern. And in this particular case, um, if you know regular expressions, you probably recognize what this pattern is, but if you don't, this dot star just means that I want it to match any possible character that could be in a tag name. So basically what this is saying is I want you to exclude every possible, or I want you to return all entries that have no tags effectively. That's, that's basically what this is saying. Any tag that matches a tag should not be, sorry, any task that has a tag should not be included in this view. So when we, we go run org agenda with control uh, COA, we see now that we have the untagged tasks view. If I press U here, now we see there's three entries and none of these entries have tags. Uh, let's see if I went to the record new tutorial video. I'm going to put a computer tag uh, tag on that one. So I'll do capital C. I'll press enter. Now, if I were to press G to refresh this list, we can see that one task going away because now we've added tags to it. So uh, if you want to ensure that all of your tasks have tags, uh, this kind of untagged tasks view is very useful because it will just show you immediately exactly which tasks need tags and you can very quickly add them using control C, control Q, and then you can press G to refresh the view to make sure that uh, that tag, sorry, that task is no longer included in that agenda view. Uh, now it is possible to uh, combine this together with the, uh, the view that we saw, uh, sorry, the planning tag thing that we saw before, maybe you want to have your untagged tasks list show up in your planning view. So uh, previously we had the uh, P planning. In fact, let me just uh, copy something over really quick here and I'll just drop it right in and we'll just take a look at it. So here's an example of a uh, cut or org agenda custom commands setting where we are once again back to P and planning as we were before in the first example, but this time we're doing something a little bit different. It's not just the query uh, information here with a type and a match. Uh, we actually have a list of multiple uh, query types and each of these will represent their own section in the agenda view. So the first section is going to be the tags to do query that looks for the at planning tag. And the second one is going to be a section that contains any to do item that has no tags assigned that uh, untagged task view that we saw before. I'm gonna use control X here to evaluate this new setting. Then we're gonna run control uh, COA and then press P for planning. 
Now you'll see we have two sections in this agenda view, uh, headlines with tags match of plus app planning, and then headlines with tag, tags match uh, minus, and then the match pattern for, the, uh, for, for any tag basically. So uh, you can see now that uh, we have both of these things visible on the same agenda view, which is really helpful if your planning process requires you to look at all app planning tasks and to just you know, scan over any untagged tasks to make sure that they have the correct context tags attached to them. Uh, but it's kind of confusing because it doesn't really tell us which is which. So like there's no title here to tell us maybe uh, which section we're looking at. Maybe you can look at it and see, but uh, I kind of like to have my agenda views actually have useful titles. So there, there is actually a way to do that. And it's part of the um, settings section of each of these entries for the sections. Um, it, one thing that's actually really cool about custom agenda views in org mode is that you can uh, customize the values of Emacs Lisp variables as part of your agenda configuration. So what we're gonna do here is drop down into a new sub list right after the match string for this uh, agenda section list, let's say. And then we're gonna write in org agenda overriding header. And then I'm gonna say this is my planning tasks. And then uh, we're gonna close that out and we're gonna make sure that the tags to do is closed out. So what we see here is that uh, our previous tags to do and then the string containing the planning tag match Right after that, we have another list of lists here. The outer list is the list of variables to be customized and each inner list is the variable to be customized plus its value. So org agenda overriding header is actually an Emacs list variable. If we use control HV, we can see that this is nil by default. Uh, when set during agenda, agenda uh, to do and tag searches, it replaces the header. So it's basically a way to set a custom header for a section inside of an agenda view. Uh, we can just quickly evaluate this and take a look at it. And now we can see that this is actually called planning tasks instead of that other headlines with tags match, et cetera, et cetera. So now it's starting to become a little bit easier to follow. We're gonna do the same thing here for this one. We're gonna say org agenda uh, overriding header. And we're gonna say uh, untagged tasks and then close out that string. Um, make sure that everything is closed up here. We're gonna reevaluate with control alt X, control C O A P. And now we have the untagged tasks section here uh, as the second section. So this is starting to look a little bit more elaborate. We can see how the custom commands list uh, for a, a single agenda view, you can have multiple sections that have their own different queries and they don't all have to be tags to do. They can be any other type of query that you want, which we'll see in just a moment when we start talking about uh, agenda views or mainly let's say daily and weekly agenda views. So uh, just to recap here, we've added an, an extra uh, list after the match string to say what variables we wanna customize. This could be any other org mode variables. I think it could be pretty much any Emacs list variable in general, but I'm, I'm not 100% certain on that. I, I definitely know that it, it is org mode variables that you can customize here and it's done quite often for uh, customizing org agenda views. So uh, now let's move on to the next agenda view. So the next useful custom agenda view we're gonna look at is a pulling in tasks from a specific file or a specific set of files, which may or may not be already a part of your org agenda files list. Um, now the example I'm gonna use here is pulling in the to-do items from an inbox file. Uh, now having an inbox can be really useful. Um, we will talk about that in another video about uh, capture, or I guess, org capture templates, but the idea is that sometimes you need to really easy way to capture new to-do items and new things that are in your head without having to go find the associated org file. You just really wanna get something out of your head and continue on with the work that you're doing. Um, so a lot of times we'll use capture templates to create these new items. And if you don't wanna to have to think about where you're gonna place them, usually it's good to have like a, an inbox of sorts to, to put all the new items so that later you can go and process them and put them into the right files, give them the right tags, et cetera. So in this case, we're gonna have an, an inbox.org file that we're gonna use as our inbox. So if you wanna look at this, it's just a simple org file with a couple of to-do items in it. Let's assume that I captured these because I thought about them and uh, later I need to go back and process those. <clears throat> so in this case, we're creating a new custom agenda view, which is uh, gonna be uh, hot keyed as I, and the, the name is gonna be inbox. We don't really care too much about that because it's only gonna show up in the, or, the meta X org agenda panel. 
And then this is gonna be a query against all to-do items. And the query string, once again, is gonna have that dot star because what we want is for all to-do items to show up here. We want, we want any to-do item, it doesn't matter what state the to-do item is because maybe we captured a task and we marked it done already. We still wanna move that to somewhere in our org file. So we want any kind of to-do item uh, to show up here. Uh, and what we're gonna do is use that same variable customization section we just talked about to customize the value of org agenda files. Now, org agenda files can be your normal list of agenda files by default. Uh, and in, in our case, it only contains the personal.org, projects.org, and work.org files. It does not contain inbox.org because personally, I don't want things in my inbox showing up in my normal agenda views unless it's specifically about dealing with inbox items. So in this case, we're gonna customize org agenda files for this specific agenda view to only look at the inbox.org file because that's where we want all the, the to-do items to come from. And we're also gonna set the org agenda overriding header here as well to say uh, unprocessed in inbox items. I kinda went a little bit further with this one just because I like to have the uh, titling of the sections even if it's a single section agenda. So we're gonna use control C-O-A-I and it's gonna give us a listing of all these tasks. But you're probably wondering, why would you bother doing that if you can just go into the inbox.org file and uh, do all the same operations there? Well, um, the agenda view actually makes a lot of things more efficient when, you, when it comes to managing to-do items or any kind of uh, item that can show up in an agenda view, specifically around uh, navigating between all the items. So you can just use a capital N, capital P to move between everything, or, or you can use control N, control P, et cetera. But you don't have to deal with like the whole content of the file. Where you're only looking at the, the heading for the to-do item. Uh, it's really easy to set tags, control C, control Q. Uh, it's also easy to uh, run refile operations. And something we'll cover in a later video, it's easy to mark multiple tasks and perform the same action across all of them bulk actions for tasks. So if you end up with a lot of inbox items, it can be much faster to process those and put them in the right place by having an agenda view versus looking at a normal org mode file. So in this case, we have uh, two of these uh, tasks here. Um, I haven't got my refiling information set up correctly, but I can at least show you that I could you know, tag these tasks if I want to. So uh, I'll say E for email on reply to Mike's message. Uh, it just makes it easy to go ahead and take care of that. But um, definitely if you have a refiling setup, well, you will want a refiling setup for this. We'll talk about refiling in another video too, but if you don't know what that is, refiling is basically where you um, are able to move a to-do item from one file to another, and the org refiling system makes it easy for you to sort of define the scope for how you refile items, like where they go in other files, which possible files are available for refiling, et cetera. So we will definitely cover that in another video, and it's uh, quite a useful feature. But I just uh, wanted to show you sort of that aspect of agenda views here to point out that even if it's a single file, there still can be value to uh, making an agenda view out of the contents of that. And one last thing worth, worth mentioning here is that uh, it is possible to add the unprocessed inbox items section to our planning agenda. So maybe if you're doing your planning, if you're sort of you know trying to set your context for the day, you wanna look at all the things that sort of need your attention, uh, you can open up your uh, agenda view and we, you can also add the inbox list to that as well. So if you've got inbox items that were captured the previous day that you haven't processed yet, uh, your daily process for planning in the morning could be looking at all your planning tasks, uh, dealing with any untagged task and also dealing with any unprocessed inbox items so that you make sure that your system is sort of up to date before you start your work for the day. Um, so just to, to point that out is we're just combining all three of the previous um, custom agenda views that we talked about before into one agenda view. You can also have these duplicated in other custom or sorry, other smaller agenda views that focus only on one thing. But you know, sometimes it's useful to just put them all together in one place if they're going to be tasks that you're going to do uh, usually together whenever you're reviewing your org mode to do items. So just another little tip there. The next useful agenda view is what you could basically call like a calendar view. Uh, there is functionality in the uh, agenda system to show you a daily or weekly calendar that has your scheduled tasks, any tasks with upcoming deadlines, um, and also anything that is um, has like an inactive timestamp for a given time in the day or anything that has been clocked. Like if you've clocked a task, we haven't talked about task clocking yet, but we will in a future video. 
where basically where you say in a given to-do item, I'm starting working on this now, start a timer, and then later I will clock out of the task and then it will show you sort of the range of time that you worked on a particular task. So this kind of calendar view agenda can be really useful for seeing what's very important for the current day. Now there's already built-in views for this. If you were to open up org agenda, you can see there's agenda for the current week or day. If you press A, then it gives you a listing of uh, basically the current week. Uh, but what I wanna do is make a custom view that integrates the uh, present day daily uh, agenda calendar view uh, with another set of useful uh, tasks but uh, first, let's just look at how to set up your own daily uh, custom agenda view. So what we're seeing right here is we're setting the org agenda custom commands list to have a new agenda called uh, D for daily agenda. And in this sub list, we're creating a, an agenda view. This is not like the tasks to do or uh, to do that we saw before. This is called agenda. Um, it has a second parameter, which, um, you know, mea culpa, I, have, I don't know what usually goes in there because normally I just see it be an empty string, but I'm sure that there's some kind of match syntax you can use in here. Maybe it's the same as the match syntax you use and the uh, other types of views. In fact, maybe if we just uh, press Control HV here, we can see what that is uh, for agenda. No, it doesn't actually tell us, but I'm guessing it's probably similar to the tags property to do match, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, the important thing here is that what we want to do is use the variable customization section of the, uh, the section customization here uh, to set the org agenda span variable to day. It's set to week by default. In fact, if you go take a look at the org, org agenda span variable, you can see that you can set it to month and year or some number of days. There's, so there's quite a lot of flexibility here if you want a different range of time to see in your agenda view. But in our case, we're only going to look at the present day. So I'm going to run control C zero uh, O A press D for daily agenda, and now we're only gonna see the things that are due today, the day that I'm recording this video. There are two tasks. Uh, one is scheduled for today. Something being scheduled for the day today is not like it being a deadline. It's almost like you're saying, this is the day that I wanna start on this task, so it will start showing up at that moment. However, a task that has a deadline uh, will start showing up on your agenda some amount of days before it's actually due. So in this case, this task is due in two days. So task with a deadline will start reminding you before it's due. A scheduled task will show up only starting on the day that it's scheduled for. Now you can control how many days in advance you get reminded about these uh, tasks by setting the, uh, let's see, what's it called? The org deadline warning days. So uh, there's a variable for that org deadline warning days. Um, I could say one, that might actually make this, uh, this task go away because it's due in two days. So let me reevaluate this and then rerun the journal. Cause when you change your, sorry, rerun the agenda. When you change your agenda configuration, sometimes you have to rerun it entirely because it might cache some of the uh, queries. Control C O A D. Now, now the uh, other task doesn't show up anymore because it's deadline is in two days that I've only set the, the restriction to one day, but maybe I want it to be a week. So I'm gonna go ahead and reevaluate that. Control C O A D. Now that uh, task with the deadline in two days shows back up again. So you do have a lot of control over what stuff shows up there. Uh, the other thing that's really useful for this type of view is to uh, get a listing of all of your high priority tasks. So if you didn't know, it is possible to set uh, task priorities on org mode task. In fact, if I were to go to my projects.org, uh, let's say I wanna set a, a priority on this draft and article for Tech Magazine, uh, org, um, priority yeah org priority is control c comma so control c comma it's going to ask me for a priority from a to c now um you could go on and set priorities from a to c on all your tasks if you want to i personally don't recommend it i think that you should only set a priority on a task whenever it actually is super high priority but it does not have a specific date attached to it so i'm only concerned with the letter a because a is the highest priority in this case I'm gonna set that letter A on here. Now what we can do is go back to our configuration. We can add another section to this agenda view, uh, tags to do, and then we're gonna do a special query syntax for priority values. So the plus is to say to include any, um, any to do item that fits this match query. So we're gonna say priority equals uh, slash A. So we're saying that we want any task that matches the priority A. 
And then we're also gonna do the same thing we did before with the org agenda overriding header, which is gonna be high priority tasks. And uh, now I think we should be all good to evaluate this and run it again. And now we can see we have our scheduled task, our deadline task, and also our um, high priority task list where that one task that we have uh, the A priority level set on does show up here. So this is one thing you can use to like get a really quick view of what's really important today. So uh, if you're trying to use this in a workflow, what you might do is, you know, do your morning planning, sort of see what things need to be addressed before you start working. And then maybe look at this daily view to see what really needs your attention today, like things that are due, things you're coming up due soon, and also any super high priority tasks that you've marked. And then once you've sort of dealt with those, or at least, you know, come up with a plan for how you're gonna deal with them, then you can start looking at your agenda views that are uh, centered around the context that you work in so that you can start picking off tasks for things like if you're at the computer, or maybe you're working on programming tasks, et cetera. Uh, sort of just a way you can kind of focus on the most important things first and then gradually get down to just what's available for the uh, things that you need to do today. So that is the uh, sort of the daily agenda that I call it. Uh, pretty useful. Uh, I think there's a lot more that you can do to customize this as well. So definitely dig into more of these variables that are related to the uh, calendar style agenda because you might find some useful stuff there. So the last custom agenda view that we're going to look at today is the weekly review. So the idea here is that at the end of every week, you might want to take a look at all the tasks that you've completed over the week. Also, maybe the uh, tasks that you've clocked time on throughout the week and just, just sort of read through them and see what you've accomplished over the span of the week. And then there's maybe also a need to look at any scheduled tasks that did not get finished over the week. So you can sort of just have that in mind for the following week and maybe um, add those to your plans in case you need to find a different approach or something to help you to uh, get those done. It's often the case for me. So uh, what we're gonna look at here is a, a new agenda command that we defined here. This is the weekly review agenda. It has two sections. Both of them actually are agenda sections, the calendar style agenda. And uh, the reason we do it this way is because we're trying to just pull out all of the uh, tasks that are either done or not done um, and show a log view, at least for the ones that got done, so that we have all the information about when they were completed, et cetera. Uh, but one thing that's kind of, or actually two things that are kind of necessary uh, to set up in your configuration before this will work for you, uh, there's a variable called org log done. If we look at that using control HV, describe variable, uh, this says that uh, information to record when a task moves to the done state. So by default in org mode, if you complete a task, it doesn't really log any information about uh, the circumstances around the completion of that task, like basically the day and time that you completed it. Uh, if you set this org log done variable to time, a symbol called time as you see here in the buffer, um, it will add a timestamp to the task saying the exact moment when you close the task. And this is gonna be necessary because this is the only way that the closed task can show up in your weekly review for the span of the current week. Uh, there's other things you can do like uh, say, like add a note, prompt for a note and add it with a, a specific template. I don't really use that because I don't really want notes for when I complete tasks, but um, it's something you could do if you wanted to. Uh, there's other ways to log uh, task state changes. We're not really going to get into that right now, but if you look into the org after uh, to do state change hook, uh, that is a hook that you can use to run some arbitrary Emacs Lisp code and potentially add some metadata to a given task. Uh, so that's something to look into in case you want something a little bit more uh, that gives you a little bit more control. But in this case, uh, the org log done set the time is good enough for the purpose we have. The other thing is setting org agenda start with log mode to true. Uh, the log mode is that sort of calendar view um, that we'll see in a moment. Uh, basically, uh, this is something that doesn't get shown by default in um, weekly agenda views, and we have to set this to true so that it always shows up. Um, the weird thing is I tried to set this in the settings section for the agenda views, and for some reason it wasn't working for me. So if someone in the, in the comments out there uh, has a suggestion on making it work just with, inside of the scope of the agenda without having to set the value globally, I would certainly be happy to hear about it, and also the people watching the video would probably be happy to hear about it. But uh, in my case, I did actually have to set this value globally before the log shows up. Let's just take a look at what this looks like. So I'm going to press Control c o a and then W for the weekly review that I... Uh, uh, I configured. And now we can see the list of completed tasks for every day of the current week, starting on Monday up until Sunday of the present week. 
And we have a few tasks that are closed here. This is all demo tasks, so there's not so many that are closed, but you can see that there are a few that have been closed across the various days of the week, and we can see the time at which they are being closed, and you're seeing now here because this is relevant to the current day. Um, then the second section we have is the unfinished, unfinished scheduled tasks. This is the list of tasks that were scheduled or had deadlines in the current week that um, were de due on a particular day that did not actually get uh, completed. So it's something just that you could use to sort of review over the things that didn't get done that were supposed to get done and just you know reschedule them or decide how you want to deal with those. Uh, so the important things about how to configure these are the org agenda skip function. This is another variable that you can look at in Emacs. It's a function to be called at each match during agenda construction. So this is basically a filter for the to-do items that show up in the agenda view. Um, so if this function returns nil, the current match should not be skipped. Otherwise, the function should return a position from where the search should be continued. Now, we don't have to write this function. There's actually a function already called org agenda skip entry if, and it takes a couple parameters. Now, this doesn't look like a function call because it really isn't. I think that org mode is treating it like a function and then invoking it. Um, so in this case, we're saying skip the entry if and we can look it up actually control hf to describe function um there, there's just conditions basically so it's just a list of conditions and they are represented as symbols apparently um i'm just going based on information i found online i don't really have like an encyclopedic knowledge of org agenda skip entry if all i know is that um the criteria here are that if it's uh if it's a to-do that is not in the done state which uh, it means that if it's, a, if it's a task that's in any other state than done, then we're going to skip it. We're not going to include it in the agenda. So this gives us only done tasks that happen within the span of the week. We also see that the, we are using org agenda span to set the span to a week instead of the day like it starts off as by default. If we look at the value of org agenda span. Well, it says it's week here, but uh, in my case, I actually had to set it to week, I think, for it to show up correctly. Um, now, on the flip side, we have the unfinished scheduled task section that also uses the org agenda skip function. And in this case, we're saying skip the entry if it's a to do that is done. So we want any task that is not completed uh, to show up in the unfinished scheduled tasks. This can mean any task that has a to do state other than done. It can be to do, it can be some other custom task state that you've created. It's just a way for you to exclude any tasks that are. Um, already finished because you want to see the things that are unfinished in this case. Um, so we're using an agenda view here just so that we get the uh, details about the um, the, de the deadlines and scheduled dates for these tasks. Things that are not scheduled don't show up here because those you're probably handling some other way. So it's not really relevant to show up in a, uh, a listing of things that were not finished for the week because they weren't really scheduled to be finished in that week. So this is how we decided to set it up here. And I think this is a pretty useful thing to use for uh, just seeing what you've completed in the week and maybe getting a, a hint as to what you might need to fo uh, follow up on on the uh, next week. So that's it for uh, all five of the custom agenda views that I wanted to show you today. Uh, all the configuration and the example files will be included as a zip in the bottom of the, the show notes or the, the article that's attached to this um, video. If you look in the, the description of this video, there's going to be a link that will take you to a page that has more information about what we've talked about today, as well as the link to the zip file that contains all the uh, configuration and example files for you to try out on your own. So definitely let me know if you have any suggestions for other cool agenda views that you've used in your workflows in the past, because I'm always you know, looking to learn cool little workflow tricks with agendas. And we'll probably talk about agendas more in future org mode videos, because there's plenty to say about how you can use them for productivity. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a comment if you have thoughts. Until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.